What is the trouble with Islam today in your view? In a word, Muslims. We have allowed uh, tribal culture to colonize the faith of Islam. When you say things like, we have to own up to quote Muslim complicity in the Holocaust. Yes. Yes, as Muslim there was, complicity. As there was Am Christian, I complicit in the Holocaust? I think that anybody who denies that Muslims played a very important role in the Holocaust. A Palestinian is Muslim, passive. I think, is your example. More than just a Palestinian. You talk about the Armenian genocide mm -hmm. in 1915, mm -hmm. carried out by the Turks. Mm -hmm. The Turks deny it was a genocide. Armenian genocide, recognized by many countries. You refer to it as a Muslim crime. Why is it not a Turkish crime? Why does everything get boiled down? It's almost, again, that you're playing, unwitt unwittingly perhaps, the extremist game because you're defining everything through an Islamic prism. When something is done in the name of a particular religion or a particular god, that is when I think we can legitimately apply the, the, the name of the religion to that crime. The moment I, I would question the premise which says Islam is defined by what Muslims do. Because if that's the basis, then what is the point of a holy brook? What is the point of a holy prophet? What is the point of scripture, revelation? To guide. To guide. But they're not the defining features of a religion. It's the tenets the behavior, of the faith. It's the behavior the law. of Muslims that defines in every generation. Anybody's childhood will influence how you think whether you think and whether you give yourself the permission to think. And so, for example, that episode of my father chasing me through the house with a knife in his hand. Incidentally, my father was nominal as a Muslim. He didn't really practice, and I knew that from the get-go. Mm. Um, but, but that one night, I flew out of my bedroom window and crawled up to the very top of the roof. And as I sur surveyed the neighborhood, I remember making a pact with myself and with Allah that I'm going to use education, not just for my own liberation, but also for the betterment of whoever else is around me. This is a young woman's journey yeah. to reconcile her faith with the freedom that she has been given in a part of the world in which her own parents did not grow up. And well, I didn't, I, but I didn't, I don't write that we owe the West our ability to think critically, not at all. In fact, a huge uh, part of my argument is that, again, Islam has its own tradition mm. of critical thinking and that there is nothing except for petty politics that should stop us from rediscovering that tradition in the 21st century. The point is, honest conversation is important and needed everywhere. And you have to stand for something, Mehdi. I stand for human rights. Do I see freedom of expression as compatible with Islam? You're looking at somebody who lives both realities every single day and does not feel at war with herself for doing so. But my question is, what can I contribute? to the wider discussion about justice. So just like I'm not going to write a book about the trouble within Christianity, simply because there are plenty of people who are already doing okay. that. So if I was straight, I would like to believe that I would be arguing exactly what I'm arguing now. But only Allah knows. Islam isn't some theory. Islam is a way of life, and it is we Muslims who define what that way of life is. I make the case for being a reformist Muslim, not just a moderate one, and here's why. Uh, moderate Muslims do denounce uh, violence that is committed in the name of Islam, very much so, but they deny that religion plays any role in that violence. The very first thing you will hear from the mouth of a moderate, typically after an act of violence committed in the name of Islam is, please don't don't misunderstand, Islam has nothing to do with this. But that's not true, because those who are committing the violence cite Islam as their inspiration. What reformist Muslims do, wait, let me finish. To define the religion. What, what reformist Muslims do is that we acknowledge there is violence, but we also say that the way in which some people are using our religion is that they are inspired by religion to commit that violence. In other words, when moderate Muslims say that Islam has nothing to do with this, they are the ones, in my humble view, who are seeding the ground, who are handing over the ground of theological interpretation to those who already have malignant intentions. But we have to acknowledge that there are verses that terrorists are using and that they should not have the last word. You can't do that if you're going to say Islam has nothing to do with this violence. What? We are also the source of reform, meaning that we can literally draw uh, inspiration from our own scripture, from the Qur'an, in order to reform our hearts, 
our spirits and our beings. Would you get rid of all scholars, imams, mullahs as you call them, anyone, get rid of all of it? I would uh, help equip a new generation of Muslims with the self-confidence to recognize that they are allowed to think for themselves. The reality, though, is that when you come from within the fold, you know, you can say to fellow Muslims that, look, the Quran itself, we can draw inspiration from it. People need to hear that there are these verses in the Quran, and it is shocking, and I would say very, very sad, that more madrasas are not teaching these aspirational verses to their children in order to have them really understand that as children of God, not slaves of God, as children of God, they have the capacity to make a difference within their faith. Yeah, the point is, is that, you know, if we Muslims are going to claim to the rest of the world, as we should, that we are a diverse lot, then that diversity needs to be heard and felt Agreed. from within. Agreed. So if we're suppressing each other's freedom of expression, then we are the first people to be stereotyping ourselves. Diversity begins but put yourself at in the position of... Again, if we're going to become ultra-defensive about the need for critical thinking in our faith, then the message that we convey to the very people whom you say are Islamophobes is that we have something to hide. And that's why we get angry, and that's why we you know, hurl fatwas at one another, and that's why we get emotional. And when you say that we have not engaged with you for 10 years, I'd rather that you would have approached the scholars instead of sitting down to write a book and say, guys, this is what we want to talk about. Sir, with all due respect, you guys, as you put it, have not actually engaged with people like me. Uh, in fact, I've received a number of invitations from ordinary Muslims who are part of congregations all over the world who are excited about these arguments. But in every single case, no exaggeration, in every single case, they have written back to me to say, actually, I'm sorry, Irshad, uh, the board has decided that uh, they're not ready and the congregation is not ready to hear these arguments. The reason I can embrace the Quran is that you know, three times as many verses in the Quran call on Muslims to think and rethink and analyze, as you've pointed out, rather than submit blindly. So by that criterion, actually all of God's creatures, Muslims especially, are called upon to keep thinking. It's not about expertise. It's about remembering, sir, that you are not God and I am not God. And therefore, none of us can claim to have the, quote, right interpretation. What my worry is, if you buy this argument that the mullahs are all bad, everyone no, thinks for themselves... all okay, bad. Come on. A lot of them Stop are bad. Stop typing that. A lot of them are bad. Don't be a typical a lot of them journalist. Are bad. A lot of them are bad. Don't do that. A lot of them are bad. I read two of your books. Don't they didn't polarize. come out very well. Don't polarize. A lot of them, a lot of them are bad. We think one sentence. Under the Arab Code of Honor, yep. Muslims are taught to abdicate our individuality and accept our fate as the property of our families. Mm -hmm. We're all 1.6 billion of us. I don't do that. My point, in its context, you understand that I am giving shades of grey and nuance, but of course, like any person who's making a particular argument, you make particular statements in order to drive the point home. I've lost many fans by writing a book called Allah, Liberty and Love, because many people thought after the first book that merely by critiquing religion, merely by doing that, I was going in the direction of atheism. The exact opposite has happened. I've deepened my faith with God and have therefore incurred the wrath of many people who would rather that I ditch Islam. And I haven't. And One that states, believers, conduct yourselves with justice and bear true witness before God. And here is the revolutionary part even if it be against yourselves, your parents, or your relatives. This is a call for moral courage. This is a call to stand up when others want you to sit down. And it is part of what makes Islam as a faith revolutionary in the 21st century, not just in the 7th. Islam supremacist is anybody who believes that Islam is the only truth available to humankind. And from my point of view, that is actually un-Quranic because, again, the Quran calls on us to be humble in our interpretations. Now, in calling the behavior of an Islam supremacist un-Quranic, am I name-calling? Am I being divisive? Am I being dismissive? You are being no, a little bit divisive. I'm being descriptive. Anybody who believes that is a supremacist, a dogmatist of some kind, and I make no apologies for saying so. Well, on that note, do you believe the Quran is an imperfect book, a flawed book, a contradictory book. It's very hard for you to round up Muslims to speak out on that issue because they just don't agree with you. And the surely field. you would acknowledge that it is uh, far less frightening 
to speak up in support of the perfect Quran than it is to speak up about contradictions within oh, the Quran. Uh, that wasn't my point. My point no, was no, that no, no, but you that, have that a, is the point. That is the point. point that, how would you define that? How would you define it? just I, believing in just, God? But would that not just make, how is that different to a theist who believes in God without believing in the Maybe Quran, the prophet? Maybe it's not. And therein again is, you know, one of, the, one of the things that we have to think about. Why do we need to be so different or so special from other people who believe in one so God? So believing in the prophethood of Muhammad, which is one of the conventional mm -hmm. beliefs, you don't think is a criteria for being a Muslim. You don't have to believe in the prophethood. I believe in the prophethood of, of Muhammad. I'm wondering if you believe that's a criteria. I do believe in the being... prophet. Oh, oh, but is that, what, should that be a criteria for being a Muslim as it conventionally is? so do not intimidate other people understand that you will have the conversation you need to have on the day of judgment with your creator and why does it need to be more complicated than that if you keep it that simple then I think that part of the contribution you one would be making is liberating spirituality from the cage of organized religion. That's okay. it, Halas. As we found out with the 2008 global economic meltdown, which was not predicted by the experts, experts often aren't experts, okay? So let's stop playing the power game, Mehdi. Let's stop playing on the terms of people who call themselves experts and who like to use their power as a cudgel, as a sledgehammer over everybody else. Who are the people which you know in your view? Who are the people you ask? Who I ask? Yeah. If I'm, I'm thinking for myself, but I will tell you. Everything. Certainly. E everything. But wait, you don't but need wait. any help in understanding no. the Quran, no. the when, tafsir, the interpretation, you, the history, I'll the ethics. You, the one, you talk about ijtihad. How do you define ijtihad? Ijtihad is Islam's own tradition of independent thinking, of critical reasoning, of debate, dissent, and reinterpretation. And yes, I have heard a thousand times that only certain people are allowed to exercise ijtihad. But even that is up for debate. You're saying from a liberal perspective, saying, we make it up as we go along. No. And they, from an extremist perspective, say, let's make it up as we go along. You're almost empowering the very people you claim to be fighting with. You know, uh, that's, that's a very... I think that's an excellent point. I've heard it before, and I've said it before. That's an excellent point. Good in theory, wonderful in theory. But again, I live in the world of reality. And the reality is that people like this already exist. And this is why progressive thinkers, and I wish there were more people in, uh, in positions of religious authority who would take that power and actually democratize so the ijtihad, so that young people know that they are worthy of thinking about these issues for themselves, yes, in a nonviolent way, but actually developing that personal relationship with Allah rather than believing that they are here to worship Allah's self-appointed ambassadors.